Yeah, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. We may have made enough noise where we actually yeah. figured out what was going on. Yeah. So. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's a Christian. I'm calling on hard times that he needed to be in the sanctuary. Well, we're going to do something a little different. I just put up just to just to have something up there. I just put a quote from Leonard Raven. So let's see. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pray. Lord, yeah, thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for your provision. Thank you for your word and that we can look to you and trust in you. Please help us, Lord, and guide us. Give us boldness. Give us grace. And give us uh, mercy and extra grace to do your work, Lord. Help us and guide us. Thank you. Amen. So we're going to start at Romans 15:13. And so there was, there came up uh, different stuff, and I did this years ago, but I figured there was a lot of new people, it would be good to cover it again. So, so we're going to start at Romans 15:13. So you'll get a chance to see what the Bible says. And we're going to compare it with what, what the Message Bible says. Yep, Romans 15, 13. So, have, uh, the Message Bible, of course, came out quite some time ago. I don't know what year it was, but it was quite some time ago. And uh, uh, it has a lot of you know, nice ways of saying different stuff. I'm, uh, you know, we're not really, you know, looking at the heart of the individual who wrote it, just, the, just the the Bible itself. Although, it's more of like a commentary, less of a Bible, but it's marketed as Bible. So, um, they had different ones that come out, like the Voice and the Passion, but they have never had the same popularity that the Message Bible has had. So, um, so in Romans 13, or 15, 13, it, uh, the Message Bible says, Oh, may the God of green hope feel, fill you fill you up with joy. Fill you up with peace so that your believing lives fill with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit will brim over with hope. So, but when you compare it with what, with what, uh, yeah, when you compare it with the Word of God, and it's just, oh, it's got a, he it had a few other extra words and thoughts. So the King James says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So, the word that he added, of course, was green, was a big thing. He also pushed the whole energy thing. So, but um, the idea of kind of that, that, uh, uh, that, that idea of, uh, of uh, that, the idea of uh, kind of the environment and being green and all of that, and, you know, we're supposed to be good to the environment and everything, but that wasn't the whole purpose of the verse. It had nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. So, and so just adding a concept to it that clearly <coughs> isn't there in the original. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that you don't, uh, to, to, to change what it says. You know, you get things like... Uh, like the Amplified Bible, will have 
where it says it has the original, it has the words on there, and then it has extra stuff in it, but it clearly identifies what's what. It sometimes it's hard to read and follow people, but it, ha it kind of gives you an idea of what it's talking about and what it means. Or sometimes you get, you get time periods where people just can't read certain versions and stuff because it just doesn't work very well. Especially if they've had different problems, either medical or sometimes if they're too, if they're really young or whatever. And so some of these other versions can kind of help to get things started, get things going, and that. But we're not talking about a difference in words and versions and stuff like that. It, he's adding whole concepts to to a uh, to a verse, and so. Okay, Second Corinthians five twenty. So Second Corinthians five twenty. The uh, the Message Bible says. Uh, were Christ's representatives, God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself, now become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. So, I'm not going to write first. This is what his first. Yes, and this is the Message Bible, it's what's up there. And so, King James says, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all... Am I on the right one? I no, nope. I am not on the right one. There we go. I found it. I'm going to say, that's not right. Uh, now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray for you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. So, of course, the, the, the verse is saying, is telling you that we are ambassadors for Christ. We're going out there for Christ into this world. Ambassadors go out into... Uh, another another land, another they go to another country that's not their own, one they weren't born born uh, in, they aren't citizens of. They go there and they represent their country. Well, we're the ambassadors for Christ. We're going out into this fallen world and representing Christ. And so, when you compare it with what the Message Bible says, it said uh, we are Christ's representatives, which is the same. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences. Well, that's a, it, it's not exactly the same. We're not talking about dropping differences. We're, we're, we're talking about the message of life and death. It's a, it's a whole lot of difference. We're representing Christ and showing, and showing the world who Christ is. They're dying and going to hell. We don't need to talk about their differences and stuff like that. We're not looking to try to correct and be all nice and kind with them, although we shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't purposely try to irritate people. But uh, but we're not looking to do that kind of stuff. What we're looking for is that uh, we're trying to tell them about Christ and tell them who, who Christ is so that they can see that they're sinners. They can see, we can teach them about their sin. And we can teach them what sin is, and that it separates them from God, and who Christ is. And so that's what we're trying to do as ambassadors for Christ. And we're trying to live and represent Christ well. We're not trying to see the differences between one another, and trying to be all, just kind of live together in harmony. And then uh, we're speaking for Christ himself now, becoming friends with God. And... Yes, we're speaking for Christ, we're becoming friends, we're becoming more than just friends. Um, and we're being, in the verse it says we're being reconciled with God. But 
we have a sin problem, and we are coming to God because he's the only solution for it. He's the only solution we can possibly have. And so we're not, of course, we're going to become friends with God, but that's not the point of the verse. The verse is to be reconciled with God and to be right with God, actually be able to be with him. So now we'll go to Matthew 6, 9. Okay, Matthew 6, 9, we're going to read 9 through 13. I think we'll go ahead and read, just to re-remind ourselves what it is. So, Matthew 6, 9, we'll read 9 through 13, talking about the Lord's Prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray you, ye our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. So the Message Bible sort of changes a few things. And it says, Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Well, in the first part, we're looking, we're hallowing God's name. We're, we're, we're treating God as being separate from us. We're, we're lifting up his name. Uh, we're lifting up his name and who he is. And this is, it's, you know, we're not, he's, he's going to reveal himself to us through his Holy Spirit. But it's just a totally different idea of what he's asking, uh, of what we're asking for. And then, uh, set the world right. Do what is best. And so, set the world right. Well, God's going to always set the world right. The world only becomes right through Christ. That's it. There is no other way. The whole world is not going to come to Christ. We would love to see it so. We go out hoping that people will, but God's already said there, there will be those who are going to hell. There will be those who will not accept who he is. That's the only way the world can truly be right. The only way this country can truly walk in the right way is if they have, if they have Christ, if the men and women and women of this country truly walk in Christ and have Christ. There's just, Christ is the only way to turn everything right. So we're not looking for God to, it's not, we're not going to set the world right. We're going to show them Christ, and that will change the way they think. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't think the same as I did 30 years ago. I just don't. I, I, I don't think the same as I did 10 years ago, because you learn who God is more and more. So, and then it says, as above, so below. We're going to cover that in a in, in, the, in, in the next one. So we're going to kind of move on and we'll come back to that one. So keep us alive with three square meals. <coughs> and so, yeah, it, God wants us to give us this day our daily bread. The thing is, is that you run into is that because you have the word of God oftentimes means more in it. There's more meat in there than there is with the word of man. We quite often say things, God wants to, we're asking him to give our food, but what about the daily bread of the word of God? What about his word? What about reaching, what about teaching us in our hearts who God is and who, and who is, uh, who God is, who Christ is, and deepens our walk in relationship with God? Uh, keep, uh, keep us forgiven with you and for, forgiven uh, others. So, yes, we're, we need to walk in forgiveness. We need to walk in forgiveness, but we want God's forgiveness. We want, we want God's forgiveness, and yeah, we want to be forgiven for others, but the verse is also showing that we need to forgive others. 
We need to be a people that are all about forgiveness. When we know how we lived and we understood how we were before Christ, we should be the most forgiving people in the world. Because we know we were destined for hell, but yet Christ died for us long before we were born. Or if they were came at the time of Christ, he died even though they weren't searching for him. They, they weren't looking for somebody to die for them, but yet he did it anyway. Because he is good, he is God, and he is love. Uh, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of squishy and sort of, uh, I, don't, I don't know, sort of, it, it, it's sort of like cheerleaders. Um, it, it, it's, it's nice for different atmospheres, but not exactly what the rest of it is is trying to convey. Not exactly the message that it's, that the word is trying to convey exactly. It sort of cuts a bunch of stuff out. It kind of, it, it makes everything really fuzzy and sort of, yeah. So the one part we, we did miss was as above, so below. Kind of skipped over it because it, it's one of those things you think, well, I mean, you know, on, on, on earth as it is in heaven, it seems kind of the same. But it's a purposeful word that's been around for a very, very long, t long time. There's going to be a short video clip, but I will explain something first before he starts. Um, as of uh, so below, uh, for the best of what the New Age can, can, can surmise from what they teach their people, is that a guy named Hermes Tresmagistris, and he, he was the one who came up with the concept and wrote it down on something called the Emerald Tablets. And it was quite a long time ago. And the idea of as above, so below, is that God, God fills all of heaven. God is up in heaven. Well, in the same way he comes, the idea is that he comes down to earth and he is in everything. Everything. He's in all the trees and the rocks and, you know, kind of like Star Wars. Uh, any, anybody old enough to remember some of the original Star Wars? Luckily, there is only one that wouldn't be old enough. Um, but kind of the original Star Wars, you know, the idea, he's in the rocks and the trees and the water and all of this. Well, if that were true, then everything would be saved. People who have Christ in them, they're going to heaven. People who don't, aren't. Period. It's just the way it is. God's not in everything. We're looking to tell them about Christ because we want God in them. We want them to know about Christ desperately. We don't want them going to hell. But the idea is that God's already in everything. Well, he's not in rocks and trees. He made them all. He, he made every single one of them. But he's separate from the world. He's not separate. This world is been, has been uh, corrupted by sin. This world is corrupted. If God was in everything, he would be corrupted too. We had, to, we had to die to ourselves and be born again in order to know Christ. We're dead to our life that we had before, and now we're walking anew. We don't think the same way. We don't live the same way. Yeah, there are things that we still struggle with. The things that we come to God with on a regular basis. We're people, we're humans in a fallen world. When we finally go to heaven, all that will finally be gone. And God definitely be good for that, because I don't, yeah, there's no way you can live in heaven like this. So, uh, but uh, he gives us the ability, he makes us new, new people. So that's what as above, so below means. Yes? Would you say the message is an attempt to be politically correct? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And... And also, I'll let a, let a new ager talk first. Uh, I have a clip, it was from a much longer video. I have a short three minute clip that will tell you a bit, that will give you a bit more information from an ex new ager's point of view. Oh. So. Let's see if they send it to it. Yay. To mention that he uh, raised by the light. Suman Kid, who Ray Young referred to yesterday, he used to be leading Bible study groups in a, in a church and is now a New Age author and leader. Listen to this quote. This is, this is how far it goes. Uh, in her book, um, The Dissident Daughter, A Woman's Journey from Christian Tradition to the Sacred Feminine, she says, 
Restoring the feminine symbol of deity means that divinity will no longer be only heavenly, other, out there, up there, beyond time and space, beyond body and death. It will also be right here, right now, in me, in the earth, in this river, in this rock, in excrement and roses alike. The devil isn't getting a kick out of this. I don't know who is. The editors of the New Age Journal, 1992, quoted from the book, and, and the book was called As Above, So Below, and they talked about Hermes Trismegistus and how he brought in this God in everything teaching. Eugene Peterson, in the message, 1993, uh, I wrote in, in uh, this book, but be still know that you're not God. Eugene Peterson not only uses the occult phrase as above, but so below, but he puts these New Age words in the mouth of our Lord and Savior. In the Lord's Prayer, instead of in earth as it is in heaven, in the message, it says, as above, so below. So he's not only using a cold phrase, he's having Jesus utter these words. <coughs> Listen to what Peterson also says. You have one master, one faith, one baptism. This is Ephesians 4, 6. One God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. Folks, the only way that the devil's going to be able to fool people is to take the word of God away from them. That's what the message is. That's what this, this book uh, it purports to be a Bible called The Voice. They actually talk about you know, the coming new age in that book. You know, Leonard Sweet talks about how he's got a case of versitis. And he says, not versitis, but versitis. He said, you know, too many scriptures, you know, we're just getting carried away with scriptures. He says, I like narratives. I like metaphors. He calls them nerophores. Nerophores. We're getting at this idea that, you know, we've all been just a little bit uptight about Scripture. Well, I would say this. When the devil confronted Jesus in the wilderness and tried to get him to do something that was ungodly and unscriptural, did Jesus quote a metaphor or a nerophore? He said, it is written. When you look through your Bible, as it is written, Scripture says, quotes, this whole idea that somehow we're all uptight by using scripture, hey, the scripture exposes our enemy. Of course he doesn't want people to be talking about testing the spirits, about seducing spirits, about like Jesus warning about, you know, that deception would be the first sign that he mentions about the coming, you know, uh, this, uh, end of the world and his return. So, when I mentioned ch chicken soup for the soul, He had mentioned, and also in there, it was he had seen that Satan was uh, using people within the church to deceive the church wonderfully, to bring in something that feels good, looks good, and if you operate mostly, they all have feelings. You know, good things happen, children are born, um, you know, people get married, also people die. We feel sad and angry and hurt, but we feel joy and all that. God gave all of these feelings to us. They're here. We have them for a purpose and a reason. God feels, too, but we're not to base everything on feelings. Feelings are deceptive. We can sometimes, and people, it's too easy to operate off feelings, and then everything, if, you, if something feels good, it must be. Well... The key, the key is, is to take it and compare it with the Word of God and see, is it good? There are a lot of things that seem to work, that seem to be good, but it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't convey, but it doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, we know it's right by the Word of God. We know, that's why we have others around us. We can talk to others. We can talk to them. We learn from them. We all can we all see and know different parts about the word of God and, and stuff, something we were reading that morning. And we can help one another out. But we look to the word of God for how we live, what we do. Yeah, God's gonna also point to things in in our lives. He's gonna he's gonna show us and teach us stuff or use things in order to show in order to teach us a, a, something that we may have never thought of before. But we live by what the Word of God says, because that's what we have. In heaven, we're going to be living with God right there. We don't need His Word. We have Him in the flesh. We don't need him. We don't need His Word anymore, because we can learn directly from God, from Him, 
We can learn from Christ, but because we have the Word made flesh, we don't need the Word in written form. So, but if that idea, other, as I said, other Bibles have come, have, have come in, like he mentioned the voice. That was one of those extremely deceptive books. Um, it, uh, it mentions Ephesians 4, 6, where it says, in, uh, uh, he is where God is in all. Well, the words that it actually uses is in you all, meaning he was talking to Christians. He was in all those Christians that he was talking to at that moment, writing that word. So all Christians have Christ. If you're truly a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. That is, that, is, that is what a Christian is. You know, you believe the truths of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And, but the world doesn't. You don't have the Holy Spirit without, without Christ, without agreeing and applying who he is. And so these other versions have kind of, they've added new age stuff and mixed it in. And, it, and they have done a pretty good job with the church because it's, in a lot of ways, a lot of churches are, like, they'll go to stuff like, well, Randy's mentioned yoga and stuff like that. Does it work for helping you get more flexible? You bet. Yes, it does. And does it build strength? It is really difficult. I, you know, I've done a little bit of it before in some classes and stuff a long time ago. But it's, yeah, it does. But it's still, what it is, is a worship to all those Hindu deities. Every single one of them. And so it's like the same concept of, you know, you, you teach like making cool, making uh, cookies with like arsenic in it. Well, even a little bit of arsenic will kill you. But that you have put some sort of poison in it that doesn't kill you right away. And you have a little bit of it. You keep eating them and eating them and it kills you from the inside out. The problem is, is that through doing it, or if it doesn't hurt you, it can hurt somebody around you that you teach them. To do stuff like that, it maybe it doesn't affect you because you don't get affected with that stuff. But somebody else you introduce it to can. Do we want to be responsible for all the things that might somebody might get into from when we're doing things we ought not be doing? Now we know through ignorance we can get into all sorts of things. So I mean we can't. We're not we're not saying that uh, that that somebody can't get into this through some sort of ignorance, but it's a difference between how you get into it, but when you realize what something is, we got to stop it. we got to stop doing it. And so that's the reason why we mentioned some of this stuff. I just you know Randy's mentioned it a few times, so I thought just kind of going over and showing a little bit and this is just a little bit. He meant, yeah, he, he, he mentioned another one. You could keep going on this for a long time, but I see no reason for it. So we have uh, the Word of God that is, and one that I, and yeah, I think it's Romans 5 3, or is it 3 5? It is 3 5. So that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Romans 3, 5. Uh, that doesn't look right either. Yeah, I can find the right one. 3, 4. That's why. Uh, so Romans 3, 4. God forbid, yet let God be true, but every man a liar. Let's face it, God's the only one that's really true. Unless we're telling the truth from the Word of God, and all of our thoughts and everything can be, they're just, that yeah, they, they're not going to be true unless they agree with the Word of God. Uh, and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou might be justified in thy saying, and might overcome when thou art judged. So... We have a, a lot of the psalms and stuff talk a lot about the Word of God. And uh, about Psalm 119. Psalm 
Psalm 119. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong direction. Uh, we'll go to verse 11. So Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119 is, if you, if you want to see a psalm that really glorifies the word of God, that does all the way through. That's a, that's a good one to, to read. Uh, Psalm 119.11 Thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You know, and so saying that he took God's word and hid it in his heart. He put it in his heart. There was a, it, it was a, uh, Richard Warmbrandt had said that before he went into prison, he was memorizing scriptures to encourage him, to encourage him. Not real. I don't even know if he even knew that he was going to need those. But when he was in prison, he was going over them in his head all the time. He didn't have the word of God <coughs> in front of him, but he had put it in his heart. It was there. And in times of need, he, he had... He had he could go over those, and also the Holy Spirit was with him. So God sent comfort to be with him when he needed it. And so we have the Word of God that shows. I mean, what is it? The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It's our shield. It's our strength. It's it's our guidance. It's everything we have uh, as far as to know how to truly walk god what we should do how we should live so it's a very very important thing to to, to not mess with so there's a lot of different versions and stuff out there and they all have certain problems because i don't know about anybody else i can't read hebrew aramaic or greek so i have to read a version because that's just the way it is i don't read or speak any of those so I can learn little bits here and there, but I will. I, it would take a long time to learn how to even remotely read it. So, and so we're all reading different versions. None of them are perfect, but we're not talking about little things here and there, but changing the whole look at what something's talking about, which is a big deal. So God means what He says, and He wants us to take it seriously. So that was it. Go back to the original. So, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for your word and that we know we can look to trust you. We know that in times of difficulty, you are there more than anybody else. We know that we can look to you for your help in time of need. Please give us boldness, Lord, to tell the world about you. And help us to follow you more and more every day. That we can be good representatives, good ambassadors of you and your ways, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. So who is Leonard Raven? He is.